With the abundance of isekai dropping recently, it can be pretty hard to find one that's worth reading, especially when a lot of them are pretty much carbon copies of each other. And though that's annoying, trust me, I know how annoying it is, it does make the feeling of finding a hidden gem within this cluster hit different. Which is why I am very hyped to talk about this isekai, which flew right under my nose for all of 2023. The story we're about to get into today goes into the life of a revolutionary who was transported to a new world after death. But instead of being reborn as a hero with crazy potential in a breathtaking fantasy world, he's reborn as, and I quote, the trash of the trash. Like imagine getting sent to the Pokemon world as a Caterpie. But what gives him an edge is years of experience lying and manipulating some of the strongest people in his world. Homies like Light Yagami if he didn't lose his mind. So without much further ado, let's talk about Lord of Goblins. But real quick, before we begin, huge shout out to the Moon Quill team for actually hitting me up and partnering with me on this video. They are the actual creators of Lord of Goblins, so it's dope that they reached out to me asking for my opinion on their webtoon. Like that is quite possibly the best part about what I do on here, you know, the fact that I have other authors out here asking me to, you know, review their webtoon or just ask me how I feel about it, you know, just because they want my opinion. That feels amazing. I would have never thought that I'd be doing this years ago, but you know, here I am, but without much further ado, let us get into Lord of Goblins. So our story begins with the backstory of a revolutionary named Leonard Aaron Vandersteen, or Lev for short. Now Lev has been through the muck, bro. He basically talks about how he came from a place where the people in power fed off the poor to feed their pockets and their pockets alone. They incited wars only for conquest. They basically watched as the working class became poorer and poorer. And from all this war and nonsense, many orphanages were formed because of course, a lot of kids lost their parents. And one of these orphans was our boy, Lev. And Lev was sick of the nonsense, so he spent his whole time climbing up the ranks, you know, playing the game, trying to make sure he was sitting right in the pockets of the people in power. As he says, to defeat the monsters, he became one. So by using the power that he gained over years and years of lying and manipulating, he basically tells the public the truth and starts a whole coup. And because of that, the people in power have him assassinated. So there's our boy dying like, damn bro, they really shot him. But it's all good. I already played my part. I did what I had to do. There are already people out here who know the truth, protesting. The people in power can't get out of this shit. But the universe said, nah bro, you too real to just pass away like this. There's another world that needs you. So right after dying, he wakes up in the body of a boy named Gar. Huh? And homeboy is shook, but it's all good. His sister Gorza snaps him out of it. But this is where things get interesting. It turns out Leonard still has all the memories of Gurm while he's in Gurm's body. So anyways, from pulling from his memories, Leonard finds out that this world is a lot different from his old world. He is what's called a Greyborn, a subspecies of a different type of monster called bogies. And unfortunately, bogies are the weakest race of all the races in this world. They're even lower than goblins, bro. Goblins, how you worse than a goblin? But to make shit worse, Greyborns are like the weakest level of bogey there is. See, back in the day, Greyborns were known for their magical talent, right? So they were, they were pretty top tier back then. However, they used their magical powers to try and start a coup and rule over all the other bogey races. And unfortunately, that coup failed and they ended up being banned from using magic. So right now, the current Greyborns are barely capable of using any magic at all, from what it seems. All they have right now is their smarts, but they're still the trash amongst the trash. Which is just wild, bro. Like, make me a slime. M ma make me a level, one of those level one creatures. Make me a snail. Why you gotta make me below a goblin like this? Like, I, this is terrible. Like, they're not even in the overworld, people. They live in the caves. They're apparently mining stones for goblins and other bogey races and shit. It's crazy. So upon hearing this, Gurm, we'll just call Leonard Gurm from now on, freaks out once again because it's like, damn, it's one thing being isekai'd, but why put me in this type of situation? I already lived life in hard mode, now you're putting me in extra difficulty for no reason. And Gorza's still worried, so she's like, maybe we should call the healer. But Gurm's basically like, nah bro, I'm all good, I'm just low-key having a post-life crisis. With that, Gorza's like, bro, we gots to go because we don't have any merits to even have you in here for this long. And upon hearing this, we find out how the Greyborn's currency works. They don't even really get to have real currency. It's just nonsense for labor. Merits allow them to get tools and food and stuff, 
but the quality is worse than garbage. So in status, you're the trash of the trash. And the shit you get is also the trash of the trash. It's bro. So obviously, Gurm loses it again. Gorza tries to help him out, but he's like, unhand me, wench. And the moment that shit happens, the healer walks in and he, he not looking happy, fam. So Gorza shook because she's like, bro, I can't even afford to pay for your current hospital bill. Now he's going to be mad. We may not be able to eat this week, but Gurm, with all the charisma, talk no jutsu's his way to victory. My man's like, I am so sorry, great healer. We only stayed here because we want to thank you for your excellent service. You are the greatest healer of them all. Dare I say, the master of all healers. You have went to the academy of master healing. All healers should bow down to you. Freaking Aerith of FF7 is not even on your level, sir. And the master healer's taken aback. He's like, oh shit, master healer, huh? Okay, I like that. With that, Gurm gives him some merits, but he phrases it in a way where it seems like it's something extra for his kind service. And because homie already had his ego stroked, the master healer's like, I, right, if this is nothing, but I'll take it since you guys want to call me a master healer and shit, get home safe. With that, Gorza chases after her brother like, whoa, 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 what the hell was that? I've never seen you kiss that much ass in my life. And Gurm straight up like, I mean, you wanted to eat, right? Like we had to eat and homie was going to take all our money. So I did what I had to do. And Gorza's is confused. She's like, nah, bro, this is you acting a lot different than my brother. My brother would not do some shit like this. But before they can continue, one of their friends pulls up and is like, yo, some dude named Jerg is coming after you guys because of the cave collapse that happened recently. So yeah, before this, a huge cave collapse happened where the tunnel that they were mining in fell and Gurm got caught in it. That was the reason why Gurm was at the Master Healer's place. But that also begs the question, did Gurm die to give room for Leonard to enter his body or was he just knocked out and because he was in that unconscious state, Leonard's soul just kind of zipped right in there? They kind of answer it later in the webtoon, but I'm gonna leave you to find that out once you actually get into it. Anyway, it turns out Jerg's brother Tog is currently being punished by the overseers of the mine because he's the one who caused a cave-in. But they're trying to blame Gurm for the whole thing, which is why Jerg and his buddies are looking for Gurm right now. With that, she dips saying, yo, I love you guys, but I'm not trying to get jumped myself, so handle this shit on your own. So Gurm, calm as ever, is like, let's just get home. We live near the overseers. He can't fight us next to the overseers. He'll get in trouble. We'll just go home, take a shortcut or some shit, and then we'll be safe. But the shortcut they happen to take is filled with monsters. So that sucks. While they're making their way through the tunnel, Gurm starts putting out a bunch of things about the cave and what's in there. Like this glowing moss he feels like can light up the main cave and this door to the acid pits, which become important later. And I like this moment because it builds character for Leonard since we didn't get to see him in his past life. All we know is that he was this master revolutionary. But moments like these where he's trying to take note of things in his world and truly understand it shows just how galaxy brain he could be. I feel like at this point, I still be freaking out. You know, I'm I'm a gray bogey. You could have made me a Pokemon, bro. You could have made me a butterfly. Anything, anything but a race lower than a goblin. I don't need that. Anyway, the two continue, but they stop once they run into a big ass centipede currently munching on another gray board. But quickly, Gurm notices, oh wait, this thing is blind. It, it may only recognize sound. So all we got to do, stay quiet and dip. And they do just that. But unfortunately, there is no way to get around it. So they're stuck trying to figure out a way to get home without running into Jerk. But doesn't matter because they run into Jerk's bitch ass anyway. He sends his goons after Gurm, roughs him up a little bit. But Gurm's like, all right, y'all can jump me if you want. But just letting you know, there's a big ass centipede around the corner. And one of Jerk's lackeys, Sav, confirms it. So they're like, oh, we should tell the overseers. But Gurm is like, what kind of stupid ass plan is that? Sure, we could tell the overseers and let them handle it. But if we handle the centipede, we would get merits for days. Apparently some group got like 200 merits for doing something similar. So some of Jurg's crew is sus about it, but Jurg is like, hold up, hold up. It sounds like this dude Gurm has a plan. So Gurm is like, I right, obviously we can't hurt it because it has armor. We're mad weak. But what we can do is lure it to the acid pits using sound. So he sets up a plan where he has them all running in a line, each person using what they can to lure it closer and closer to the acid pits. But the big question about this plan is, who's going to be the last person to lead it there and shut it in? And Jurg is like, I mean, it's obviously going to be Gurm, right? Because this is your plan. 
And while Gorza does protest, Gurman's like, I mean, I can lock it. Just, just promise me you'll help me out with it, Jerg. And Jerg, this just shows how low the Greyborns have gotten, bro. Remember when I said that they were known for their intelligence? This guy makes it so obvious he's gonna betray Gurm, bro. He's like, oh, of course I'll help you. But the look in his face just shows he's jumping to kill this boy. It's so obvious even Gorza notices it. So she's like, bro, what are you gonna do? Not if, but when he tries to kill you. And Gurm's like, nah, sis, don't even worry about it. You'll know I'm in danger if I'm the one that's screaming. So the plan goes beautifully until it gets to Jerg. He does his part, you know, the centipede goes past him, but then it pauses, turns around and is like, hold up, I smell a bitch. So Gurm peeps and is like, yo, 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 come through. We're gonna both lead it to the acid pits and we'll lock it in together. So Jerg does it, thinking that Gurm is following him. And tell me how Gurm leads him into this open door like a cartoon character, bro. Like this shit feels like a Looney Tunes skit. And the moment they're both in there, of course, Gurm locks the shit because you're not gonna kill me. The rest of the group comes to him and they're like, bro, what happened to Jerg? And he's like, sorry, bro, it didn't work out as planned. He got caught up. I had to lock them both in there. But you know, he was a hero. Y'all can just take my earnings for this. It's cool. Don't worry about it. And Jerg's crew eats it up, fam. They're like, bro, you are super kind. We respect you. So Leonard Deadass just got here and he already has mad people in the palm of his hand. Well, mad people except for Gorza. She's like, bro, what actually happened to Jerg? Did he actually get trapped in the pits? Did, did, that, did the plan actually fail? And Gurm showed up like, I mean, nah, you could say I helped out the centipede a little bit. And though Gorza acts like she's okay with this, she's still very sus about who this person in the center brother's body. And to find out if she learns the truth and if Gurm even survives, you're gonna have to read the webtoon for yourself. All right, so thoughts. I'm be real with y'all. I am pleasantly surprised with how the story's going. I was reading it, I saw he was being reborn as a goblin, and I also saw the whole thing about how Greyborns have latent magical abilities. So I was over here like, all right, I just gotta wait. They're probably gonna say that as a Greyborn, he secretly is like a god at magic or something like that. But no, while I read the story, I like how the author stays true to the fact that his superpower is being a dope ass orator, a crazy good manipulator, and is truly a breath of fresh air watching a main character in stories like this solve their problems using their wits and cleverness instead of just brute force. Now don't get me wrong, there are still a bunch of fights and stuff in this story, but the focus is more so how Gurm builds his group of people that believe in him, and how he basically redoes what he did in his last world. You're watching a leader grow because he's using the skills that a leader actually requires, not just because he's super strong. And I'm hyped to see how far he goes as a leader and how many people he's able to get on his squad. So if you're looking for a big brain isekai that's more on the unique side, check out Lord of Goblins. You can read it now on Webtoon. I put the link in my description below. Once again, huge thank you to Moonquill for partnering with me on this video. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like. Comment with other comics, mangas, Webtoons you want me to cover in this type of style. Share it with other Webtoon fans or people looking for Webtoons to read. And of course, subscribe for more content like this. And hit that bell to stay notified. Check out the Don'tyverse.com, the site holding all my merch like this. It's also the place where you'll find my newsletter teaching content creators to be better at what they do. With all that being said, be easy, stay lit, stay healthy out there, Black Lives Matter, and don't forget, you can do whatever the hell you put your mind to. All it takes is practice and time. Peace out, y'all.